Hi friends, today I wanted to do a slightly different video where we look at a statistic and then jump into R to see how to work with it. So the statistic that we're looking at today is the tetrachoric correlation. So this is a correlation that we can use where we have two binary variables. Normally we think about correlation as a measure between two numeric variables, but there are different forms that we can use for different data types. So tetrachoric is for two binary variables, gives us a measure between negative one and positive one, just like our other correlation measures. And it is normally in the software calculated with maximum likelihood, although we actually have this formula here with a cosine, uh, and we can see that it's a ratio of the diagonals to the off diagonals. And by taking that ratio of diagonals to off diagonals into that formula, uh, we can get something that is pretty close to a correlation measure. The only place where it can run into trouble is where we have a zero in one of those cells. We can see that if we had a zero, then everything would start to fall apart. In the software, what it will normally do to compensate for this is it will just add a little, a little amount, normally 0.5, as a little adjustment or correction in order to give us a figure. So if we had ordinal categorical variables, but they weren't binary, then instead we would use what's called a polychoric correlation. And in fact, the tetrachoric is just a special case of the polychoric correlation. At some point in the future, I will do a video on that one. Uh, also coming soon, a video on maximum likelihood because I think it's a really important concept for people to know and understand. So it might seem a little bit weird uh, what we're doing here and the assumptions may be cleared up or maybe make it actually a little bit more confusing. I'm not sure. You can let me know in the comments. But basically what's happening here is we're doing an approximation to the normal distribution. I've got the reference there to a article in Psychometrica from the 70s uh, that de gives you all the details on this. But basically what we're doing is we're assuming that even though these are binary variables, there's some sort of underlying normal distribution and we're taking an approximation of that. So there's some sort of latent structure. And this is why we see this tetrachoric correlation used quite often in psychometrics. So where we have uh, psychometric variables that are binary, uh, but we're assuming that there's some sort of latent construct. So something that is underneath this thing that we are categorizing as binary uh, that is not. Uh, and so that's, that's kind of the, the assumptions or that underlying philosophy uh, that gets used with then translating into the mathematics to get us a correlation out of some binary variables. So now let's jump into R and have a look at doing this. So here is the code we are going to be working with. It will be available linked up on my website. So there'll be a link down below. Start off, we are using three different libraries. So the tetrachoric function is in the psych package uh, using tidyverse just because later on I want to do some selection. And the data that we're going to work with is from open intro and so there's some resume data. Before we work with some real data though, let's just have a look at a couple of examples just to see what this function is doing. So let's start off and I've made a table here. We can see all of the observations are on the diagonal. So we've got our two binary variables and you're either in this one or in this one. And when we run our tetrachoric, we can see two things. So we can see that the tetrachoric correlation here is one. Uh, and we also got a warning message here. Because there were some zeros, they replaced those with 0.5s in order to do the correction, in order to be able to do the calculation. If we now have a look at a table where everything is on the off diagonal, and we run that one, we can see the correlation of negative one. And then finally, let's create a table where there is a bit of a mix. Certainly still looks like it is diagonal dominant, uh, but not as much. Let's run our tetrachoric. And we can see that we have correlation of 0.38. So 
little bit of a positive association between these two variables. The other thing that by default it gives us is these figures here. Uh, this is not necessarily super intuitive. Uh, so the tau, basically what it's doing is it's saying, well, if, if we were on our standard normal distribution, where would our cut points be? And they would be here uh, for each variable, one at 0.65, one at 0.14. So if you kind of imagine that we had a bell curve and we were kind of shuffling it, uh, and then we're using these binary variables as the approximations, uh, that's basically what it tells us. It's not super useful. Really, when we're using these tetrachoric correlations, it is very much for the correlation figure. Okay, so let's have a look at this with some real data. And we should note that that assumption of the latent normality may be a little bit questionable here for a couple of these variables. So the data that we're looking at is called uh, Resume. It's actually pretty interesting data, pretty quite good project data. It came from a published study uh, from the early 2000s where they sent out a whole lot of CVs or resumes for jobs. They recorded a whole lot of data about the type of job, uh, what the job requirements were, uh, most importantly, whether they received a callback. So that was the outcome, but they were also really interested in whether particular types of names and kind of an inferred race and gender had an impact on callbacks. So if you had two people with similar, same or similar years of college, degrees and so on, would these actually be predictive of getting a callback? Uh, and you can link up to that data and uh, see that, yes, there was perhaps a little bit of uh, racism or something going on. So we've got a number of different binary variables here. So these are the ones that we are going to be looking at. And then very end, resume quality as well. So various different bits and pieces. And so when we give tetrachoric uh, data, we can give it as a data frame or we can give it as a table. So these first two examples, I'm using select to just select particular columns, still passes a effectively a data frame. So a data frame or a matrix. So we'll run this first one and we can see here a uh, correlation between receiving callback being in the military pretty close to zero. Uh, the second one here, uh, what I've done, I've selected a whole lot of different variables. So instead of just looking at one pair, we're actually going to get a table with different correlations. And we can scan through. Uh, the one that probably jumps out the most is pretty strong, uh, well, certainly moderate correlation between uh, doing volunteer work, being in the military. Uh, although from memory, these were all doctored CVs. So this was just uh, all doctored CVs. Uh, so really the, the one that we can look at most is receive the callback. Uh, and we see that special skills stands out more than being a volunteer, being in the military, or computer skills. So next, I'm going to show you one that doesn't work. So for this one, uh, I'm grabbing receive callback, but also resume quality. And if we come over, resume quality was with highs and lows. Uh, and this can sometimes upset the tetrachoric function. So when we run it, we can see that it didn't particularly like that. So there's two ways that we can solve this. One is that we can just make an indicator variable. So here, we've made an if else to make a zero one. We'll make that. And then we can just run it just as, as is. So all I did was create one more variable in resume uh, called resume quality high, uh, which was a binary indicator. Alternatively, what we can do is we can do a table. And in fact, for our table, we don't need high. So it just took the high off there. So just resume quality. So this was the one that didn't work before. Uh, but we're just making a table out of the two of those. And that worked as well. One thing we'll notice is that 
passing it a table made this look a little bit different and it also rounded it off. So there was a 0.06. Uh, just because of the order that we gave it, this had the negative sign. We can forget about that. But we can see that it's 0.059. So it rounds a little bit differently depending on whether we gave it a table or gave it the variables. But we can actually get at the whole figure. So here if we go output, uh, we can see that there's a number of different things in our object that was created. And if we just get the row, which is our correlation, uh, we can see the figure. Uh, so that figure there was for race. Uh, if we go and we change that to resume quality, uh, we can see there is the negative 0.059 and you can see it's actually even a longer number. So both of those uh, different presentations, we're rounding it a little bit differently, um, but we can access the full one if we so need. So that's the tetrachoric correlation. Uh, quite useful if you are doing any kind of psychometrics. Uh, so item response theory uses it quite a lot. But it can be a handy tool just, just to have in the tool belt. Uh, sometimes when we're working with binary data, just another way to be able to look at the associations between our binary variables. I hope this has been helpful. Uh, I will be back with more of this style of stats plus R video in the future. It has been helpful. Uh, I will be back with more of this style of stats plus R video in the future.